Welcome back to Workshop Friend and this is video number two on renovating this 1963 1AG Adcock & Shipley mill. In the last uh, episode um, we got the machine together and I discovered that there was some bearing noise, well some noise coming from the output shaft which is behind the head here. And uh, what I discovered in the last video was that as I varied speed, uh, changed between the high and low um, settings and used the variable frequency drive to change the speed, the noise changed. So I'm fairly confident that it is a problem with the output shaft. I hope it's not the gearbox. Um, I hope it's not the front bearings because they're going to be more expensive. Uh, I hope it's something at the rear. So um, I'm going to zoom in and uh, take the camera around the machine while it's running and see if you can pick up the noises which I can hear. I think there were in fact two noises. There was the general sort of rumbling noise as I would describe it, but then there was also a clicking noise. And uh, the clicking noise is definitely coming from this rear bearing. So my hunch is that this bearing might be okay, but the bearing or bearings on the rear here are... I've had it. So what I propose doing is uh, getting access to the back here, removing the belt and the pulley, and taking a look at that bearing. Well, that came off remarkably easily. There's one thing about machine tools as compared with uh, road vehicles. Usually it's easy to disassemble them because there's no rust and there's plenty of oil. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. Okay, there we are. That's off. Let's have a look at that. It's got some old grease in there. It doesn't exactly look packed with grease. I've just made this quarter inch peg to put in the hole here and I found that with a block of wood I can release this. Yeah, it's undone. Good. There's a pinch bolt in here which uh, effectively clamps the two halves of this uh, threaded washer together to lock it on the thread. I hope this isn't part of the, I suspect it is though, part of the preload on the bearings against the front bearing, we'll see. I have no assembly drawings so I'm having to just work this out as I go along. As it turns out the, there is no preload against this re rear bearing, this rear bearing is just providing support. Any preload is in the front assembly. I'm not sure it is. Okay, looks like we're going to have to take this cover plate off. Hopefully the cover plate will come off with the bearing and the bearing will slip over the shaft and then we can maybe press the bearing out of this cover plate on the bench. We'll see. Yep, it's separating. Okay, I've decided to uh, pull this off 
and I'm going to use the bearing cap which has got uh, these three holes in and uh, I've used these uh, quarter Whitworth studs which are close enough to quarter UNC and I found this little plate here which uh, fits in the back here so we can push that on and uh, I've got some spacers and some nuts here and hopefully we can pull this off certainly better than bashing it around hopefully this will give us enough length to pull it right off I have no idea I'm sure the flange is not very deep it's probably only in a quarter of an inch or so but of course we've got to get the we've got to pull the bearing over the shaft as well so who knows how long how much length that will require as soon as we get a bit of tension on here it'll be a bit easier yeah it's separating I can see the gap here we'll just keep going with that hopefully we can pull this right off what I didn't realize at this point is that two of the holes are threaded for extractor bolts to pull the plate off it wasn't till reassembly that I realized that feature was there yep pressure's coming off now so I think we're nearly there yep we're there take that up before it drops out I had these bits and pieces in my spacer box which I use for mounting items on my drill or shaping machine or occasionally on my lathe so I keep a box of uh, studs and spacers and t-nuts and there we are it's off good and there's a spacer in there too I'll just have a little look inside there now something there looks a bit suspicious to me a lot of rust there and it looks yeah, I wonder if that bearing has been slipping on the shaft maybe the bearings locked up I don't know we're gonna to have to have a closer look at that okay there are <coughs> more signs of uh, bearing failure uh, the first is that the bearing is extremely rough and you can also see there on the inside that I think bring this up a bit you can see there probably there is some scuff marks so they even look like burn marks but could that be I don't know anyway it looks like that's been running on the spindle and the bearing is jammed at some point so we're gonna to have to get this out it looks like uh, we can take this cover off and push it out from one side or the other Okay, we have a similar setup to before so uh, three studs um, a spacer and using this end plate so let's see if we can push this bearing out okay something's gone
well <laughs> that's rough and so that's hopefully the sole reason for the noise um, I'm gonna clean this up a little bit more and then uh, take some measurements and see if we can get a replacement so I've um, got the bearing out cleaned it up a bit it is absolutely shot no wonder there was a huge amount of noise coming from the machine and intermittently it's been jamming and spinning on the shaft so I'm going to have to look at the shaft and see what I need to do to that hopefully I can get away with just fitting a new bearing on top of it we'll see uh, the OD looks to be 3.125 3 and 1 8th. The ID is 1.574, which is an odd size, not quite sure what that is. And the width is 0 0.707. So, um, are those metric sizes or are they imperial sizes? I'm going to have to uh, take this inside and see what's available, see if I can get a replacement for this. Okay, three days ago I ordered a new bearing. This is um, a decent quality bearing to the same spec as the original with nominal clearance. So um, we're ready to, to assemble that. I've also got some grease for it as well. Before we do that, I thought it would be good to have a closer look at the disassembled old bearing to see what was creating all that noise. So I was able to separate the cage by drilling out the rivets. So that came apart. I was then able to move the balls to one half of the circumference. It's a bit difficult because it was all crunchy and messed up inside there, but I managed to move them around. And after a lot of juggling and fiddling, I was able to separate the two rings. So let's have a closer look and see what the actual damage is. So looking at the outer race here, there's just one spot where there's obvious damage here. The rest looks reasonably clean. And uh, interestingly, it's the inner race which has suffered the, most, the worst damage. I don't know if that's normal in such uh, failures, but uh, the inner race has failed in five or six places around the circumference. And the bearing in the old grease was full of very fine uh, metal chips. Uh, all the balls seem more or less the same. They've lost their original color I assume and they've taken on this this color I don't know why that is only one of them seems to have suffered obvious damage um, the others seem reasonably okay anyway the bearing is definitely expired and um, you can see what was creating all the noise so we can go ahead now and refit the new bearing into the housing and uh, put the housing back on the machine so here's why grease wasn't getting to the bearing um, I've removed the oil nipple and just cleaned out the the outer diameter that's the diameter that the nipple screws into and then there's an inner diameter which feeds through to this hole here and that was completely blocked um, there's no way you could have forced grease into there so I wonder how for how many years that's been blocked up and uh, maybe that's the reason why this rear bearing um, hasn't had grease for a long time maybe that's why it failed but yeah, I'm taking time to clear out these channels and I will fit new oil nipples or grease nipples where appropriate and uh, just to make sure that in future lubrication is adequate I guess on these older machines that's the kind of thing that you need to look out for uh, I haven't gone through all the bearings yet but I think uh, as I continue to look at the machine I will take pay closer attention to these kinds of issues the lubrication issues
we assembled everything and then we'll just compare the noise now with how it sounded before.